Okay, in the first little video, I said I wanted to go into the garden because it hasn't been a brilliant summer and I wanted to show you the flowers. Look at it now, it's raining. Middle of July, no summer, it's just raining again. Okay, so this little video now is to explore the, uh, the whole philosophical notion of epistemology, ontology and ethics. So, um, when you consider all research studies have to be based in some sort of philosophical starting point, and maybe a clear way to think of this is in those three different ways in which um, I've demonstrated this in the Nature of Knowledge session, which looks at epistemologies, then methodologies, and then methods. So it's worth stopping to think about each and every one of those. So the epistemology, and that includes an ontology, these are your philosophical elements, and epistemology is just asking us how we know what we say we know. And the ontology is to do with the exploration of what we understand of being, ways of being. These are the facts, but how do you know that they are the facts? So that's the epistemology and the ontology. Now, if your study is going to be quantitative, if, for example, you're doing a study looking back on patient notes, maybe over the last 12 months, and you're looking at patient outcomes or um, maybe patient satisfaction surveys, how, they, um, how they've appreciated their time in care or how long they've spent in care and where they've been dispatched to. So you're just interested in the numbers here. So this is a quantitative study. In that case, if... If it's quantitative research that you're doing here, then you might be quite brief with any mention at all about epistemology because quantitative research is essentially based in post-positivism and you might even want to just Google, um, just Google uh, what is the epistemology of post-positivism. Or another one you might want to do, what is the epistemology of pragmatism? Because especially for lots of studies within the NHS, um, so many of them are based in a pragmatic approach to healthcare and healthcare research. And by saying that, I mean that there's the underlying philosophical approach to this, but also the pragmatic outcomes. How are you going to do this study? And in pragmatism, it may be saying, well, you can use whatever you want, whichever methods you want, um, as long as they work best. That's a really pragmatic approach to this, okay? In that case, you might only have a brief mention of um, epistemology. So you might want to mention a little bit about it in your chapter two, if it's relevant there, but certainly this comes into your chapter three, your methodology chapter. However, if you're looking at qualitative types of, of research inquiry, then your epistemology may be much bigger, much deeper. And in fact, some people, it may be so deep, it's going to run through the whole of your project. So even by starting off in chapter one in the introduction, you may be mentioning your philosophical starting point, your epistemology there. Let me give you some examples. Supposing, and I think I've used this example with you before, um, supposing you're doing a study on domestic violence and abuse. Now, there are so many different ways in which you can approach this. Um, you might turn around and say, well, look, I want to get some figures on this and look at how many people are the victims of domestic violence and abuse, and I want to break this down by gender. So you might notice that the majority of victims of domestic violence and abuse tend to be females, and the majority of perpetrators are male. Now, this doesn't always happen, um, especially um, when, when you're looking at studies where you may have females as the perpetrators of domestic violence and abuse, or then it's going to be different in same-sex relations. So your epistemological starting point is going to be different all according to who you want to focus on in this. Are you focusing on the person that you're calling the victim or the perpetrator? So you're trying to see it from their point of view. Um, and who is that person? So if you say, well, I want to focus on um, women who are the victims of domestic violence and abuse, then your epistemological starting point could be to look at feminist articles, feminist epistemologies. 
and you'll notice that there is so much done on domestic violence, intimate partner violence and abuse within feminist studies. And they'll be looking at it from the point of view of the woman as the victim. But even when I use this word victim, there are whole loads of studies called victimology. What do you mean by victim? How do you understand what a victim is? What does a victim look like? So all of this type of stuff would come under victimology studies. So you might say, well, okay, I'll look at feminism to see what feminism is saying about women who are victims of domestic violence and abuse. But I also um, want to try to understand the implications of this term victim. Because look how some people say, well, no, I don't want to be defined as a victim. Um, I see myself as a, as a survivor. So that's going to be important. What's the transition then between victim and survivor? And other people say, I want to take this even further and I want to consider myself a thriver through all of this. So that would come under victimology studies. So in that case, you may be combining different epistemologies. So you may be looking at some feminism. You may also be looking at victimology studies. Someone else might turn around and say, well, actually, I want to explore what makes men do this in the first place. Why would a man commit crimes of um, violence against women and girls or intimate partner violence, domestic violence, whatever terminology you're exploring here? But to look at it from a man's point of view, then you may say, well, I need to look at masculinity studies. That's a totally different epistemology. Or supposing you're a health visitor and you say, well, look, I'm interested on the impact on the gender d development and understanding of j young children who are witnesses of domestic violence happening in the home. That's totally different again. You may then be looking through the lens of childhood studies. So that's how epistemology can come into this. So if you're looking at a study from a quantitative point of view, your epistemology may be quite brief. If you're looking at it more from a qualitative point of view, there are so many different ways in which your epistemology may run right the way throughout your work. Because it might even um, dictate to you the types of materials you're going to read, or even the methods you then carry out. So say, for example, if, if it was domestic violence you're interested in, if you were doing a study to see, well, how many patients that have come into my hospital have had it written on their notes? So that could be a quantitative study. But supposing you were working with people who have been the recipients of domestic violence or abuse, and you're trying to get a greater understanding in how they feel about this, then that's going to be qualitative research. That's going to dictate to you that you need um, to understand this totally differently and use different resources and even carry out your research methods in different ways.